Welcome to another episode of Coaching Football with Brian Clee. Season 1, episode 19, going to talk about inside linebacker play within an odd defensive structure. Uh, season 1's dragged on a little longer than planned. Um, big thank you to anyone who's uh, subscribed or checked out the channel before. Uh, also, big thank you to all the players that I've coached at inside linebacker. We're looking at some of the film here in the past couple days and putting together the, the video for everyone. Uh, we've, we've had some really good guys play at inside linebacker that understood their role within the defense and, and maybe overcame some physical limitations in, in what they do. So big thanks to all the student athletes, all the players that have played inside linebacker for us here at Coloma over the past uh, six, seven years. And uh, big thanks to some of the coaches, obviously my, my former head coach, Joe Stevens. Big thanks for letting me be the defensive coordinator. Uh, thanks to... Uh, Coach Tim Reb, who coached our inside linebackers for, for three out of the past seven years here. Uh, Kurt Mead, who's, who's been a, a big, big time part of, of coaching our defense, and he's coached the inside linebackers on and off. And Todd Smith helped out with the inside linebackers. Travis Potter. Uh, and and uh, lastly, but not least, uh, Peter Murphy. Um, again, thank you to all the guys that have helped out with the inside linebacker play. Uh, before we get into the actual film and, and the breakdown of everything, inside linebacker play, it all comes down to understanding a defense should be structured so those inside linebackers are making the majority of the tackles of the defense. They should lead the team in tackles on defense in most situations. And what you're going to see is the fundamentals that we use. We prefer guard reads uh, just because we see multiple back formations three, four running backs coming out of the backfield, especially when you start counting the quarterback and some of the full house tee looks that we regularly see two, three, four times a season. And ultimately, those guards, they don't lie. If you get good uh, inside linebacker good at reading a guard, fitting off that guard, and ultimately seeing the, the, seeing the guard, seeing a small piece of the picture, lets them see the entire picture. And, and, and hopefully some of the video that I'm about to share with you, some of the drills that we use to teach our inside linebackers, Hopefully all of that becomes really apparent on how you can get your inside linebacker to be fundamentally sound pursuing the football off of reading a key and, and reacting to the read that that key gives you. And then lastly and most importantly really uh, using great fundamentals of pursuit and tackle to have a great angle and leverage on the ball and, and come up with a tackle, lead your team in tackles and, and be highly successful in whatever, whatever scheme you're using, especially if you're using a, a 3-4 odd base defense up front. So our philosophy on defense is we want 11 defenders to use simple yet sound keys to tack downhill, pursue, and make swarming tackles with uncommon effort, energy, and enthusiasm. Expanding on that philosophy, every sound defense of scheme relies on a force defender setting the edge, Inside defenders filling gaps, such as inside linebackers, which we're about to talk about. An alley player to provide cut, uh, backside cutback or, or counter uh, support. All defenders must have simple and sound keys and reads in order to attack blockers and pursue the ball carrier. This is especially true, again, for inside linebackers. We ultimately prefer to steal the ball in most cases and kill it on the perimeter because it allows us for those consistent downhill run fits so we play fast and get all defenders pursuing to the tackle. There's all the drills that we use with their inside linebackers. Um, some, some basic fundamentals there. Uh, uh, Going to talk about those. Uh, we got run keys and reads. Those will key backfield, will key guard. You could read center if you wanted to. Um, we don't do that necessarily in an odd front. Uh, you, you, our blitz technique for us, just because what we have with our uh, linebackers, we don't uh, necessarily differentiate how we blitz versus run or pass. We kind of keep both of those the same. Um, that might be something you want to do a little different. And then we obviously got our, our pass keys and reads, uh, depending on really the, the location of the number three receiver and the number three receiver tells us where our eyes need to go. Fundamentals of playing inside linebacker. Number one, everybody on our defense and especially inside linebackers, they need to have correct alignment and stance to execute their assignment to aggressively pursue and tackle every play. That is the number one responsibility of our inside linebackers. Most good defensive schemes are going to keep the inside linebackers relatively clean and unblocked. They need to pursue and go make the tackle. 
they need to be able to leverage the blocker or receiver based on your assignment on every play. So we'll play a variety of techniques with those guys. If the primary key is the offensive line, their secondary key is ultimately the backfield. Again, their job is to pursue and tackle the ball carrier, and that confirms their initial read and the pursuit angle they need to take. If we flip that around, if the primary key is the backfield, the secondary key is the offensive line for any misdirection and identifying open windows and potential run-throughs. As I mentioned, inside linebackers, their number one job is to pursue and tackle. So really appropriate to share at least our tackle progression. It's nothing special. Um, we talk about going from speed to power. So I'm coming up to make a tackle. I'm going from a sprint to a more powerful base with that near foot, uh, split in the crotch of the ball carrier, uh, near, near foot, near hip, all those things going on. I want to get that powerful base as I, I split the crotch just prior to that collision. And then we throw our clubs, bringing both hands and arms upwards, skinning the ribs of both myself and the ball carrier up through the armpits of the ball carrier, nice and high on the, on the back of the ball carrier, and then run our feet, maintain a shoulder width base, and, and drive for five extra steps after beginning the tackle. And then we put that all together for a full tackle, uh, just trying to be nice and smooth, having good leverage. Take this back to the uh, very beginning here. So there's our speed to power. We blow a whistle, go back. Now we're going to go speed to power, throw the clubs. We do these on pretty quick whistles. Whistle. Our pad level there by Trent. Trent and Davion helping me out. A couple former players. Pad level's good. Speed to power, throw the clubs. And then run our feet for five more steps, at least. And you just pick a kid and you will have them run the guy back far enough. And here we go, one smooth tackle. So just one whistle at the start. Speed power, throw the clubs, run your feet. This is how we teach it in the fall. Everybody's going, speed to power. And it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. You know, this is the entire program two years ago. There's our speed of power. Speed of power coming again. Throw our clubs. Now we're the same progression. Speed of power, throw your clubs, run your feet. One tackle. We could run our feet way better here on the uh, on the end. We probably addressed it with that kid. Uh, so now we're working the other shoulder. And, and ultimately, I want to take my uh, near shoulder and tackle the near hip. Don't need to worry about getting the head across or anything. There, that's a pretty good job throwing the clubs, coming up through the armpits. Don't know what <laughs> one guy's doing there. And then there's one tackle. This is probably the best, like every, everything you do as a coach, ultimately in practice should be showing up in games. Uh, this is a, a JV game about three years ago. That is speed, power, throw clubs, run your feet. Number 83 right here. Some real good stuff. Get a couple guys helping on the tackle. End zone shot. Could maybe have a little more powerful base. Alignment. Uh, just so that way we have some common te terminology here. 10 technique is, is shading one side of the center in what we do. Uh, double zero technique. Um, head up. And like I said, 10 technique shading the side of the center. 20 technique. Head up on the guard. 30 technique. Outside on the guard. 40 technique. Head up on the offensive tackle, 60 technique, outside shade on the offensive tackle, stacking the five technique. And, and the widest we uh, ask our inside linebackers to get would be um, a 60 technique. Our stance, we want a shoulder width, base, no stagger, slight knee bend. Elbows and hands inside the shoulder frame, ready to strike or shed, um, depending on the matchup between that linebacker and the blocker they get. 
mental weight on the outside foot. We want our first step to be downhill with the inside foot to fill and spill any interior gaps. Again, that goes back to our defensive philosophy of inside defenders spill the ball to the perimeter. Our, our, our inside linebackers in almost all cases end up being spill players um, when we're playing our 3-4. To start, we want a downhill fill. So we want that great stance we just talked about. We want that first step with the inside foot, get out of the footprint, continue to down, downhill fill uh, to the sign gap with controlled steps while confirming the read given by your keys, which we'll, we'll talk about uh, later on. And then destroy or shed any blockers with great pad level. This, this past year was uh, definitely a little rough coaching a bunch of younger guys. Um, I think that, that number one thing after being able to tackle effectively as an inside linebacker is being able to shed any blockers. Here's a great example of uh, that's Trent Brown, our inside linebacker. That is a downhill fill. Might not even necessarily make the tackle, but his, his job is to take on that running back. And the, the whole... The whole play gets stopped by taking on that lead blocker. After a downhill fill, the inside linebacker needs to destroy the blocker's fall. Um, if, if I'm taking on typically a, a, a offensive lineman and he, he's up on me and whatnot, um, most of our guys, we want a rip in most cases. We should dip and rip with the backside uh, shoulder and arm while dropping that, that backside knee before quickly stepping to the gap responsibility. I got to know which side of a guard or running back I need to win on. Um, and then a, a push-pull punch. Defender should strike upward with both hands. Quickly pull the defender down and away before uh, dipping and, and, and ripping into the gap responsibility. Um, this is a little bit more. Um, if we're kind of two-gapping the entire front, we're two-gapping our, our inside linebackers, we got to have the ability to rip off to either side. So we got to be a little bit more physical uh, with those offensive linemen. So here's just our dip and rip. We'll walk through it. Make sure the guys understand we got to have good pad level. Go to the other side. Trent kind of gets pushed out there some. Now we're going to pick up the speed some. And he, he, he got me pretty good there. That's not me just giving a bad look. Now I got a piece of him. So I, I get, you see his frustration at the end. All right. And again, Trent's a graduate. He knows what's going on here. So now the difference between these last two clips really illustrates uh, pad level and, and, and whatnot and just being really good with the dip and rip. Right here, Trent doesn't get that foot through fast enough. His, his dip and rip's a little bit late and a little bit high. I give him a little crap. He knows he's going to fix it. Now that step through times up way more. Let it play full speed there. So he ends up way cleaner. Pushed out a little bit on that side. Cleans it up a little bit. And that, that's the number one thing I think inside linebackers have to do. For our inside linebackers and any inside linebackers, I think there's times and places where you want to key the backfield and get your reads primarily off the backfield with your secondary reads off of the offensive lineman as far as picking up any pullers for a counter misdirection type deal when we key the backfield our reads are ultimately in and out which is describing the back's path in relationship to the initial alignment of the linebacker if that running back is in you need to stay square for cutback and, and big time you're tackling with the inside shoulder um, if the running back's path is at you you get downhill you want to leverage and tackle the near hep and, and really end up forcing that guy back to cut back. And then if the running back's out, we need to get get downhill initially, but then quickly scrape out to the perimeter, match the back, back of that run, path of that running back. Our inside gap, if we had one, if the, if the whole backfield's past it, we don't have that inside gap. Uh, we're on the play side here. We need to be able to leverage and tackle that near hip to outside run support. So here's a early season example of in and out in our, in our inside run. Right now, 
Ball carrier is coming inside of me as the play side inside linebacker. Ball carrier is inside of me as that linebacker. I continue downhill. I'm at. That ball carrier is coming at me. I'm a spill player for the right inside linebacker here. I'm a scrape player as the backside inside linebacker. We get our classic fill and spill, scrape and overlap uh, against the gap scheme. And we're, we're that's a decent clip. A uh, couple more examples of that. At me, that Mac linebacker has the at. The Will linebacker has the in. Ultimately, that Will linebacker's job is to make sure any sort of cutback, I, I, I clean it up. That Mac linebacker, I'm hitting it with the near shoulder, my right shoulder. Will linebacker, my left shoulder. Uh, flip it around on the other side. Here's another, uh, here's a game clip of kind of the at and the in showing up. Guys getting downhill. And ultimately, both the inside linebackers, I mean, they're, they're taking on blockers at the same time. And, and we really consider this a backfield read because right now you don't have either guard pulling. So uh, depending on what I'm reading, all right, we mostly will read guards here in a little bit. But if my guard doesn't pull, now i got to pick up the backfield for number 17 here, the, the Will linebacker, I believe. So his back is going inside and away. Number five, his back's coming at him. Number five's downhill. We get our scrape and overlap. He's a spill player. Number 17's a spill player. And ultimately, uh, 17 just needs a little lower pad level here on the tackle. It's Delton Kellogg. They're big and strong. Another in at out case. Oh, this is a game... One of the few games where we've straight up keyed the backfield, both inside linebackers, downhill. Top inside linebacker, action's coming at him. Bottom inside linebacker, uh, action's going inside of him. Top inside linebacker is on the uh, outside hip. He's, he's hitting with his inside shoulder. And uh, bottom inside linebacker, or, or Will, scraping cross, hitting the near hip with his inside shoulder. I'll just let the uh, end zone clip play here. We got Cody at uh, our Mac linebacker. And Trent coming from Will. Another backfield read. So this is misdirection. Uh, the downside, I think, to key in backfield is sometimes misdirection like this. It pauses you for a second, but ultimately, uh, if, if, if that pauses you, the backfield's also slower. So it's usually an okay thing. So we got action uh, coming at me for the Mac linebacker, action going away from me, inside for the Will linebacker. Mac, Mac, uh, actually, I got flipped those two guys around, but <laughs> bottom guy, action came at him, took on the guard. And, and what I don't love about the backfield read is, is we ultimately, we usually don't fit open windows as well. We don't see the offensive linemen as well. But this was a team that didn't pull very much. So that's why we went to backfield reads, try and speed up those inside linebackers. All right, uh, top of the screen, action's coming at him. Bottom of the screen, action's inside. Real good job getting downhill by the inside, scraping. Tackle tries to scoop him. Leverage inside shoulder. Both guys are inside shoulder leverage. Here we go, end zone, end zone cut. So again, at and the in guy. Blocker uh, near back is at me. Should be more downhill here by our Mac linebacker. But he's making sure he's playing the outside of the insert. Will linebacker's playing the inside. Insert doesn't do a great job. Both linebackers get up on the uh, tackle. And, and, and that's, that's, that's a good example of, all right, even if that near back on the ISO play here, even if he does get the block, which again, I, I'd like us to be more downhill, dip and rip through that. Our, our, our downhill fill and rip progression that we talked about a little bit uh, earlier. I, I'd, I'd like that near linebacker to be more downhill. So that job of the, the lead blocker is even harder. Um, so we maybe hit this. This was ultimately a three yard gain. Maybe, maybe we hit this for zero yard gain if we dip and rip past that. And even if he got blocked better, we'd be in okay spot. So here we go. Something getting out to the perimeter. 
same same overall idea, ideas both guys are going to ultimately hit uh Ideally, we're, we're, now we're going to hit with the outside shoulder by our Mac linebacker because we're going to force it out to um, either our, our, our stud linebacker or one of our DBs. Maybe our Bob linebacker on the boundary side here on, on the other side uh, if, if it was ever at the will. I, I, both guys work both sides of the drill. And again, the backside linebacker is constantly looking for, all right, where's the cutback? Where's the cutback? No cutback, I can keep pursuing Uh, linebacker on the bottom of the screen, he ultimately ends up reading and out. Again, no pullers, so he's getting out to the perimeter because he got to his secondary read. He, he's, he's ultimately keying backfield after confirming uh, his guard is not pulling here. So guard didn't pull. These guys are unbalanced. We've shifted the front over right there. His, uh, he's he's B-gap responsible. Normally, he'd be A-gap responsible if, if this wasn't an uh, overshifted front. He saw the gap got filled. Also, this formation, like they, the, their thing was running uh, what we call power iso on. So they're not pulling on the power. Um, they're, they're on blocking with the tight end. He reads that that gap's closing. All right, that guard's ultimately going to block our nobody. I guess he's jobs blocked the backside inside linebacker. Um, he sees this backfield action of those two lead blockers is working outside again he saw this formation a couple times comes up make sure the inside gap is filled overlaps actually with the corner good job running the perimeter let's watch our backside linebacker one time number 11 here dylan working behind kevin kevin's 50 uh 56 there uh dylan gets picked up on the backside and that's one downside of uh key and guards is you end up a little bit slow on the backside, and, and really he should be understanding. Uh, and this might be just the case of, all right, the the kid playing nose on the center here. Normally he's a two technique on the guard and he's ripping inside. Well, if that kid's ripping the a gap, I'm this side of the guard responsible. So if he doesn't hop back, he he maybe beats that guard and ends up being a bonus tackler. There's another one, end zone shot. We got sweep coming to the perimeter. Inside linebacker gets out, probably overruns it just a little bit too much. End zone shot could be higher up. That's a long story. It, yeah, high school filmers are they're extraordinary. All right, so near back, where's he go? He's out. So now I want to keep right now this half step behind this running back. I want to keep that leverage the entire time here. And. He uh, ultimately, he's falling the near back. And because of that, he ends up outside for a second. This is actually a great example of the backside inside linebacker, 21, playing the end, playing the cutback. So watch his near back here. Near back is working away. He's inside of me now. I'm downhill, looking for a gap. I don't love how his shoulders turn here. But ultimately, if the ball carrier's shoulders are turned, we got to be turned. He does a great job right here of squaring back up. He gets some help from uh, the play side four technique. Play side four technique actually does a nice job. Um, he steps straight ahead. And because of that, as the tackle goes to reach him, he's, he's, he's ultimately playing our leg technique. That's a whole other video. Um, check it out sometime. So he ends up reach for a second 32 is out 21 scraping from the backside gets squared up and is a bonus guy on the tackle another clip ultimately get an out read pursue the perimeter inside out leverage so we're watching that linebacker his near back's out. He's got to go help outside. I'm doing a real good job of, because uh, this is not like a straight, straight perimeter run. It's, it's ultimately off the extra tackle. Stay square. Ends up chopping the legs down, helping the corner. 
And then this is a great example of once that goes out, I'm going to hit that with my uh, outside shoulder. I'm leveraging it to my force player. We're in a, a hard cover two look here with the corner. Corner's near back comes at him. He keeps the perimeter. Be nice if our corner stayed a little bit more square. We get a bunch of tacklers to it. And that, that's, that's the idea of the defense of, of the concept of spill the ball to the perimeter. Outside linebacker. Spills it. Coach is getting reached by the tight end. Oh, that's a base block by the tight end. He, he's coached up. Hey, I went inside. Let my, my inside linebackers run to the perimeter here. Safety. That's, we could be a little more aggressive. Throw our clubs, man. Throw our clubs. In my opinion and in my experience as a defensive coordinator, when you are playing an odd front, a 3-4, uh, the most effective read for your inside linebacker is, is, is uh, reads off of a guard key. Uh, we prefer keying those offensive guards because we see uh, full house T backfields where four ball carriers are ultimately going to touch the ball over the course of the game. There's, there's uh, really a variety of misdirection, even, even on full flow plays. Um, there's ultimately three points of attack, and then you get the counters going back, the boots going back. And a lot of times those guards lead you in the right direction, whereas you can't key the backfield um, when there's multiple ball carriers going in multiple directions. The, the ball carriers are going to lie. The guards typically don't. Um, when we're keying those offensive guards, our reads include uh, an inside movement by the guard, whether that's a down block or a scoop block. We're going to treat both of those uh, the same. And came to that realization um, my second year uh, coaching in, in the 3-4 system that, that I've been coaching in. Um, ultimately, that down block and that scoop block are going to be treated the same. We're downhill fill, uh, and then we're scraping based off the backfield and filling again. And, and the concept of fill, scrape, fill, I'll make sure we get to that in some, some film coming up here. Uh, that guard can move outside, whether that's a reach block uh, or a base block. And we're going to stack that guard. We're going to know uh, our, our initial assignments, uh, typically B gap, unless we got some sort of movement on. Then, then I know if it's B gap or A gap, but I'm going to stack that guard. And again, I'm fill, scrape, fill uh, off of what the backfield does. If I stack that guard up in the B gap, ultimately the running back's going to have to cut back to A gap, and, and that's where I would fall back. Uh, that guard could pull inside. So the inside pull is something going behind the center. We say guard away equals opposite A, and, and we make a guard call to the other inside linebacker. Typically, he's reading his guard. He's going to have a down block. You'll see a diagram here coming up here shortly. Um, so that guard call is maybe not super important there, but it gets our guys understanding. All right, we got a clue of where the ball's probably going because where the guard's going, and, and it reemphasizes, give those guys a verbal uh, reminder that they're working together all the time. Uh, outside pull, so that guard goes completely behind the set, uh, the tackle now, working to the perimeter. We're immediately scraping outside and, and continuing downhill. Uh, while making a pull call. Here, I think the pull call is more important, making that to the other inside linebacker, because that's telling them, you know, it's a buck sweep, pin and pull type deal. Um, we both need to be working flatter. That backside inside linebacker, though, needs to be constantly looking for some sort of cutback if things get messy on the perimeter. And then lastly, movement backwards, a hi-hat pass block. We're dropping off at our 45, working in relationship to the number three receiver. Here is, I think, why you use guard reads in a 3-4 system, all right? So backfield, there's three backs back there if the quarterback's a running threat, and he's going to be on this play. So they fake power sweep here to the perimeter. They run quarterback trap back away from it. Our inside linebackers never take a step to the perimeter here. They're both downhill where the ball is ultimately going. And now 21's fit is not great. But that's a little bit on the nose. That that nose, if he wasn't picking, he's, he's picking a side of the center, really. If he was more straight on into the center, 55 would feel like he's got a double longer. And, and 21 could be a bit more downhill. So if I, if I read backs, 32, he's got to make the realization, all right, back away, I take the next next back. Here, he sees his guard. He's, his guard is playing slow. So he's going to fit downhill. He's a spill player. He com gets completely wrecked by the offensive tackle. And, and again, 21. So our, 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 our end result of this play, 
out of our linebackers is not what we want. They're not making the tackle, but they're working to the point of attack. They never take a step. Again, they don't follow the fakes because the guards are not lying. Guard blocks down. I should if if he screamed downhill faster, the tackle's angle is going to be more messed up. 32 shuffling a little bit too long. If if he screamed downhill faster and tried to take this real quick, he'd beat our four technique there. He's down inside. We still got support out of our outside linebacker. 32 maybe goes and makes a tackle if he just screams downhill. Instead, he gives 62 time to get up on him. We get a spill. We were playing five techniques, not four techniques. Um, and again, the backside linebacker, guard away, opposite A. It, it, he should be more downhill on this as much as the nose. Again, the nose picks a side to win to. Uh, we were true two gap in that nose. It'd be nice if he was flipping his hips in that opposite A. That guard blocks him longer. 21 comes completely clean. We'll get that on, on other film here later on. First, first, uh, first read we're gonna make when we're keying guards is is that back, that guard coming right at me. That guard with what we call a, a backer rule uh, as a, as a flex bone team. Uh, that that guard comes at me. I'm gonna stack B gap. I'm gonna force cut back to my teammate. That that guard's working a scoop in uh, as the will linebacker. I want to uh, again stack my B gap and then be able to fall to where the the ball is. Flip it around, they go away from the Mac, same deal. And this is what that would look like. So now it, it, it depends on what gap responsible I am. This one, I'm a, I'm a gap responsible. I'm inside gap responsible, blue barrel center. There's my guard. If, if uh, we're slanting to the left, if the line's moving to the left, I am a gap responsible, I know that. So I don't need to stack it up as much if we're on a movement. Here's a good example of being uh, inside gap responsible. Our Mac linebacker is right there. He's working downhill. Everything gets closed off. He makes the tackle. Really good. Uh, that's that's just about as good of a tackle example <laughs> uh, as as what we had out of that JV kid. Motion away. Four techniques in B gap. Uh, uh, outside linebacker here uh, is in C gap, and, and we're really working out to the D gap out of the inside linebacker. So uh, as much as we're initially, uh, he is A gap responsible, I believe. He's A to B gap responsible. Nose has made a mess. He's taking care of both A gaps. Four techniques moving inside. He's taking care of the B gap. Outside linebacker's taking care of the C gap. That that inside linebacker needs to be able to, that's an example of, all right, I can't fill B because my four did. I can't fill uh, C because my six technique did. I'm going to keep on scraping. And, and he knows the ball's coming this way because the guard down blocked. Or the guard's base blocking. The guard's coming at me, except for the four technique keeps him clean. Don't have end zone clip here, but his guard's kind of going to come straight at him. He's inside. We were we were on a line movement to the field, so our our right here. That linebacker's inside the guard. First guy on the show. Really made most of that tackle all on his own. Another case of uh, guards coming at me. I'm an inside filler, and uh, Cody was he was not the fastest. He wasn't the biggest. Uh, I, I think he, he wrestled his senior year at like 140, 135 pounds. Probably weighed uh, 145 pounds during the football season. Downhill, could rip a little better. It gets knocked down, but it gets on some legs, wrestles them to the ground. And, and this is again. Why we want to read guards in an odd front. Why I prefer doing it this way. Because right now, you watch the rest of the backfield. Quarterback, fullback, like, like you're looking like this and you're like, man, they got a safety over here. Well, the, the guys that worked over there are the guys who keys say go over there. You know, the, the four or five technique we have here, he's, he's got a, a base block by his, his offensive tackle. 
The outside linebacker's got an outside release by his, his tight end. The cornerback's playing run support. His near back's up inside, so that becomes the safety's responsibility. He's outside leverage on that tight end to make sure he sets the edge. If, if we're keying backfield with our, our linebackers, number 32 is maybe completely out of the picture. So instead of an inside linebacker making a tackle, we're making a tackle for a six, seven, eight yard gain with our safeties in our corner. Another dive. So that, that linebacker tries to come straight at me. Or the guard tries to come straight at the linebacker. Right there is the guard's butt. Guard's right there. Three technique keeps that inside linebacker clean. Inside linebacker scrapes out to C gap. Really the three technique close A gap all by himself. We get the ball out to the perimeter. Great example of, of leveraging it to my run support. Another dive, dive read in this case. Inside linebacker's keying the guard. Works downhill. And really that's more of a down block, which we're about to talk about in an upcoming clip. Dylan here. That guard's coming down. I'm gonna stack. This is a good example of stacking. He's staying square. Ball carrier square. Ball carrier scrapes at the last second. We get him running sideways, two yard gain. Not a bad play. So now, uh, this is where I think the guard reads become really effective is, is when you're playing a gap scheme. Um, play side, you get the down block. You know you're coming downhill, you're looking to spill. You're expecting a guard coming around there, some sort of insert blocker, maybe an ISO, and you're expecting to spill it. The backside linebacker is going to scrape and overlap. So down block, downhill, fill. Hit things with my outside shoulder because I'm a spill player at that point. Here it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Here it is in a game. Top inside linebacker end zone shot's awesome. He kind of gets just a hits a run through. And this is this is a great example of, of team defense. All right, that guard blocks down. I'm filling now. Five technique anchor C gap. I'm the B gap player. Number 26, the the lead back. Again, if I, if I'm playing the lead back, yeah, I track this hip. But I don't find the ball carrier as fast. I'm gonna argue if if I track the near back. And I definitely, this open window, I probably don't see this open window if I'm not reading that guard as that linebacker. I'm B-gap responsible, five technique, anchor C-gap, nose plays the A-gap, I'm downhill filling now. Hit the run through, one yard gain. Nice job by Ian there. Uh, stopped by the classroom the other day, Ian did, uh, actually, he's, he's in the Navy, he's on break, and uh, he's at the Naval Academy, and, and coming back. Um, Top inside linebacker. It's filling downhill. We spill it out to him. He kills it. He, he really makes a play in C gap there. Let you see it one more time. His guard down blocks. He starts to fill. He makes the kill. We'll get straight to the end zone shot on this. This is just a beautiful, beautiful run fit by, by all our guys. So, guards down. Will linebacker Robbie working downhill. He fills the interior gap. He makes sure a cutback doesn't happen. So now his backside linebacker, back here, his backside linebacker guard away. I'm going to scrape opposite A. Opposite A is closed by the nose. Will linebacker's downhill. He's fitting B gap. He closes it. This uh, Will linebacker, uh, I mean Mac linebacker, backside linebacker, uh, he should be looking to get downhill right through here. He kind of stacks up his teammate a little bit too long, so we don't get scrape and overlap that we prefer out of him. He should be making the tackle right here on this near hip. Good job though. We forced the ball wider outside linebacker corner. Run the kid out of bounds. Three-yard gain. Not a bad defensive play, in my opinion. 
get to the end zone shot again. I got it down. So number three is downhill. You see for a second right here, the four technique closing B gap. He makes a little bit of shuffle. He's out to C gap. He spills the ball. And that's our backside linebacker making play all the way out in the alley. So he gets that guard away. A gap's closed by the nose. B gap closed by the four technique. C gap, D gap closed by the uh, the, in, the other inside linebacker and the outside linebacker. Ball's on the perimeter. He goes and tackles legs. A little bit more of a gain than we want. The corner on that side could maybe set a more aggressive edge. And then, and then may, maybe we get this tackle thing, this thing tackled for less than a five yard gain. Zero yard gain coming up here. Downhill. Scraping overlap coming. End zone shot is uh, happening too fast, but you get the downhill fill. The scrape could be more confident by our other linebacker. We'll get to the end zone shot. So backside linebacker is actually blitzing here. Guard. Really, this is more of a base block type deal out of the guard. Not the perfect place, but that's okay. That backside inside linebacker is, is actually making the play here as, as the ball works away. Real got good job scraping across, getting to the, the next open window. And that's that's a great example. He's on an A-gap blitz here. He plays that side of the guard. And because he knows his gap responsibility, he knows his guard is working on him there. And he's the A-gap responsible. He sees the backfield off of all that. scrapes across. So that's the case. Um, for whatever reason this year, uh, number 82, is, his name's Nick. He, he got out to the perimeter a little bit more often, so Ian had to play cutback. Um, when we went at Ian, when, when teams went at Ian and he got some sort of, all right, my guard's telling me stay on my side. Guard's base blocking for, for Nick. When Ian saw that, he'd go fill that A-gap now, and Nick could be an overlap player. When Nick got stuff at him, for whatever reason, he scraped a little bit more often, a little bit faster. And, and Ian had to play cutback. So that's a great example. Those two inside linebackers need to work off of each other. Get to the end zone shot because that's what, that's what we're here for. Downhill fill right away. No hesitation. Pad level is outstanding. Um, Ian's another wrestling kid for us. Like I, 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 I mentioned earlier about Cody. He, ball carry can't go anywhere. Downhill fill. Scrape and overlap. And we chop it down at uh, that five technique or whatever there. Uh, here we go. This will be Kevin. Downhill fill. Scrape. Make the tackle. End zone shot. Guards down blocking. Kevin's filling. Guard misses him. Kevin makes the tackle. Good job by our, our uh, Kevin's playing Will for us at that spot. Here we go, looking at that linebacker, that guard. We're downhill off the, the down block, and we're scraping from the backside. I think both linebackers show up here. So down block, fill. Guard away, opposite A. And we do get both linebackers in on the tackle by the end of this thing. So where I said earlier, if, if we want to stay downhill, the, that first clip I showed you where there was a lot of misdirection, less misdirection here. Okay, if I was keen backfield, I'd probably get almost the exact same fit. And, and ultimately, uh, we get a base block out there. This is like a power, uh, a one back power type deal, or at least they're, they're basing with their offensive tackle. If I get downhill more, I'm going to make the play in the backfield as a linebacker. Trusting that, that down block. So now, guard away. Guard away. Go downhill. Kill it behind. If we tackle a little better with better leverage, maybe we, we make a better play there. Downhill fill out of that linebacker. 
end zone shot is going to show it real nice. Key in that guard. Guard down blocks. Window gets a little bit muddy here. But that, that linebacker is tight to the tackles down blocking. Uh, our five technique should be squeezing this down more and, and we should be getting the, the scrape outside by the by the linebacker. Linebacker gets blocked down on by the tight end. And and we probably only get this if we're reading again the guard. If he reads his near back, his near back's faking the power block. He's stepping outside, he's trying to follow that. He sees that guard down block, he knows he needs to fill straight ahead. As, as much as he scrapes and, and makes the play in, in what we'd call, I guess, B-gap, C-gap, really. He's outside the offensive tackle. He's inside the tight end. As much as he's making the play in C-gap, he's just really going forward because he sees the guard down block. And while that's a four-yard gain, with the way our five technique played it, that, that trap goes for way more if we're not keying that uh, guard. Let's check the uh, backside linebacker. Guard away. He's a little slow. He should be getting uh, to opposite A. He's, he's in a cutback position. Not, not a perfect trap fit by any means, but there we are. Guard down blocks. I'm feeling downhill. The Mac linebacker there. Ball gets spilled to the perimeter, so he scrapes just a little bit to C-gap. Tackle for loss. Another trap play. We get the inside linebacker scraping out. That's that fill scrape fill principle. So guards down. Right here, that would be our uh, will linebacker in this situation. He's working downhill, trying to fill. Guard away. He's working opposite A. Opposite A is closed. I'm going to keep scraping. And for some reason, uh, <laughs> Backside linebacker doesn't follow his guard. We, we get more guys to the point of attack, and instead of it almost being a touchdown here, it maybe is a tackle for loss because we get more hats on the ball. Yeah. So, Will linebacker, downhill fill. That guard down blocked. We make contact. In the backfield, it's, it's a four-yard loss. If, A, we just make that one-on-one -on -one tackle, but I think what makes tacklers better is when you get multiple guys. If we get the overlap out of our backside linebacker, okay, if he picks up his guard away, which is, I don't know why he's doing this, okay, if he scrapes to overlap, or if we spill this ball with our five technique, that ball goes out wider, and now the angle of that running back, he's not able to keep his shoulder square, and he's, he's a big running back. I think he wrestled, he wrestled, I know he wrestled uh, 189 as like a, a sophomore. He might have wrestled 215 as a senior, uh, and this is his senior year. Um, he, he's easily, uh, during football season, 200 pounds. And and our inside linebacker there, Kevin, also played uh, center for us, offensive line. He actually got moved to linebacker because uh, we, he, he played some guard here and there uh, in scout looks, and the inside linebacker coach, Coach Reb, saw how good he moved. If he stays on that tackle, we get three yard loss, which is huge, huge in that spot. Counter GT. We're going to get good downhill fill here. Our backside linebacker here doesn't pick up his guard going away. I don't know. He's more concerned about, I don't know, something on the perimeter of the pass game. But guard down. We're squeezing it down with the, uh, the, the three technique here. They're going double down block. Three technique ultimately uh, gets gets blocked into the B gap, which is fine. That's where it's supposed to be. Fill out. Good play. So now guard reads uh, a, a counter play. Power and counter end up being the exact same thing uh, when you're keying guards. There's a down block. There's a guard away. We're a fill player. We're a scrape player. Guard away, fill opposite A. And, and we're initially filling opposite A. So if we got some sort of line movement on where the nose goes, uh, all right, nose goes to the right. Again, blue barrel is the center in, in this drill. Nose goes to the right, I'm filling to the left. I'm going to take that first A gap. If there's an open window, I got to go fill it because that's what the ball carrier is going to see. 
And if the ball carrier doesn't see it, I maybe snipe him in the backfield. I get him before he gets out. And then again, I'm leveraging with my shoulder. Real good, real good rep here by, by Trent showing us how to do things. Davion giving us the guard look. And, and, and this is not a blind thing. I'm, this is actually real good play coming up. I, I'm feeling the opposite A. That's my aiming point, but I'm looking for an open window. Guard goes away. All right, that opposite A is closed. Holy crap. And, and really, the path by, uh, ultimately, we're playing Mac linebacker here out of 32. That ball carrier has to cut back so fast. And that's really aiming for opposite A. Opposite A got closed. There's a huge gap. I'm going to go fit it. Outstanding play. There's our guard, guard away, aim for opposite A, stay downhill, good tackle. That's uh, one of the first times we're playing an odd front, <laughs> several years ago, Christian Hudson scraping across, and, and he. this is why we got to aim for opposite A. Nose got washed, three technique got kicked out, we're trapped, but... They don't have a guy to get to this backside linebacker. We're playing a, a, a what we call a nose nose 33 jaws, where we got an extra linebacker. We subbed a DB off the field, and it's a 5-3 look against a full house T. It'd be a 3-3-5 three, three, look if we, if we get some sort of spread. And because they don't have that, we get the run through in the A-gap. Guard away for... Uh, Backside linebacker here. Now, now, this play gets made because the outside linebacker is outstanding at the top of the screen. But this is a great job if you just watch the inside linebacker. His shoulders stay square. He's downhill. Guard away. Ball carry gets ate up by the defensive lineman. He's going to be able to scrape to the perimeter because he's underneath the down blocks of, I believe that's the offensive tackle and tight end. Great job of playing the outside hit for the kill. And again, I, I don't think we get that downhill fill out of him without the guard read. And that lets him, really, that tackle should be picking him up. The tight end should be picking up the, the other inside linebacker. And, and it should have to be a DB that makes the play if the offense executes just a little bit better here. Real good run fit when we get to the uh, perimeter. Nose makes a mess. We got a bunch of guys. Get to the end zone here. Just a, a great fit. Guard away. Work to opposite A. Now, the down block out of, I believe that's offensive tackle, gets our linebacker here for a second. Because we're spilling it to the perimeter, he's going to be able to get out there. We almost get a really big, really big turnover. Counter. So, again, this is counter is where... Uh, if, if they're going to fake power coming to the, to the left here. If, if, if we're key in backfield, all right, that back pauses, that's going to pause me as the, the linebacker here. Our, 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 uh, again, I, th I think that's our Mac linebacker, Dylan. Uh, that's going to pause me. He, there's no hesitation here. That guard goes away. I'm going. I'm finding a fit. Find the first gap to run through. He does. Two-yard loss. And as much as this is a guard away example out of our Mac linebacker, Will linebacker, what's his guard do? What's this kid do right here? His guard's down blocking our nose. Go fill it. So again, that, that misdirection play that's supposed to go get us, supposed to make it hard for inside linebackers, we've got, uh, we're all over it. Both inside linebackers, backside, outside linebacker. They're all in the backfield making a play. Two-yard loss. Real good. There's our fill. There's our scraping overlap. Guard down, filling, guard away, scrape opposite A. Opposite A is really closed by my, my teammate, my buddy at linebacker. 
scrape outside of it. Just coming out of a half, and they're trying a different blocking scheme on their trap play here. And, and they're, as much as we're trapped and we're kicked out, oh, well, that, that, that four technique had to tackle outside release, so he's thinking sweep. <laughs> Not a good spot for a four technique, but both inside linebackers are clean because we forced that team to make some blocking scheme adjustments. Guard away. Go fill opposite A. Again, if I'm, I'm keying the backfield, that running back, his shoulders are turned like he's going on sweep. And I don't know if this is sweep or power for sure out of, out of this team. The other back, what I see, like that looks like sweep to me. The other linebacker, the, the Mac linebacker here, we're, we're playing our, our 32 front. That, that guy is out to the perimeter. Because he sees the guard working uh, out there. Really, he should be in that A-gap, and then we're getting the scraping overlap. But, again, we're filling first open window. He's to the outside. If we're not filling that opposite edge, if we're not keying the, 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 the guard, we may be overrun this as the backside linebacker. Great example of staying square and downhill and, and playing the cutback. And it's pull away, scrape opposite A. Or guard away, excuse me. All right. Uh, this is James playing Will Linebacker, playoff game. He could be more downhill. I don't like how he hops and kind of shuffles and does karaoke in place there for a second. But guard away, opposite A, a one-yard gain. We snipe that in the backfield if he goes harder. All right, uh, now we got some sort of work to the outside. So uh, that, that guard pulls the play side. He's going around the offensive tackle. I'm a scrape player right away. I got the scoop to in uh, from that other guard, and I'm, I'm scraping. Once I hear that pull call, I know I if this guard's scooping me instead of guard away, this guard's scooping me. Now I, I, I want to win to the side that the pull's happening. My teammate yells pull. I want to go win to that side of the guard. So there's an example of a pull. I'm playing behind the guard. Again, I'm, I'm leveraging it to the perimeter. The other read that's ultimately the same, if that guard works outside, he tries to cut our four technique. That's what the blue barrel represents. All right, center is the black trash can guard, four technique. Four technique gets cut. Now I'm the straight player to the outside. And again, I want to be a outside shoulder, tackle it, force the ball to my leverage on the perimeter. Real good example out of our JVs here. Guard works to reach our three technique. Inside linebacker shows up. He's scraping. Our corner makes the play, but right here, here's our inside linebacker working outside, uh, inside out support. End zone shot. Guard steps out. Overtakes the three technique. I'm looking for a run through. Is it coming through B gap? That's why there's hesitation. That's why he doesn't make the tackle, but his job is to make sure that ball doesn't go up inside. Outside linebacker anchors C-gap, makes the running back waste his block. Corner's completely off the play. And the corner stepping off the play that early, like he's, he knows that that guy's blocking him. He has to know that, otherwise that's a little bit dicey there. So we get uh, like a truck toss type deal here. As much as the tackle pulls, it's the guard getting outside that lets our linebacker know, hey, I got to get outside as well. So right here is the guard. Guard's out. I'm downhill. Fill inside out. You see the quick little dip. Right here, there's a quick little dip. Hey, maybe I got to fit this inside. Here's a, I don't know what technique we're playing here. It's a four or five. Probably a four. Our four tries to hit pocket the tackle. He's doing that. So he's hanging out in B gap. Inside linebackers just making sure the ball doesn't cut up in B gap. Four or five technique. Again, I think we played a four here. He beat the guard. We got a bunch of tacklers on the perimeter. If, if we tackle that damn thing better, uh, we're, we're talking about a one yard loss.
So now ball is getting out to the perimeter. We get to the end zone shot here. Ultimately, this is this is more example of a perimeter play uh, than anything. But we're keying that guard really just should be on the down blocking part. Everything's out past it now. And this is also a down and distance. It's fourth and four. Uh, we might be off of a timeout. Inside linebacker, we get the win right here. We knew the ball carrier was probably going, whichever side that running back was on, that's a full house T-type deal. We knew that this guy was getting the ball. Plan on scraping to the perimeter as, as that linebacker. Great roll tackle, in my opinion. Seals the deal. Uh, sweep coming. Guards outside. Guards trying to work outside. Maybe not quite a pull, but it's definitely a reach. Start working downhill. Because he's downhill, the guard doesn't really see him. And the inside linebacker is going to be able to run the kid to the sideline. We get a hold down inside. So, Last read. Uh, we get a hi-hat, a pass drop. We're dropping to 45. We're relating to the number three. Uh receiver running back in two by two slot uh in, in three by one and, and i want depth that's the number one thing uh trent could probably open up drop this right foot back at a deeper angle and he, it, we want to work to about 10 yards so we can come downhill on things and here's a swing again now this is us getting a ball carrier involved. We'll, we'll drill it both ways. Depends on the type of team you're playing that week. I don't like the little... Cross, instead of that crossover step, it'd be greater if he dropped that foot there and went. Get to 8 to 10 yards. When the ball gets thrown, you can come down your inside leverage. Outside linebacker or DB, depending on the formation, probably be outside leverage. So we get, this is us relating to number three. After that guard read, and this is play action off of, off of that. But this is us working to that number three. All right, they get in the illegal downfield almost. They're, they're faking their power. Number three is the tight end. Number three is blocking here. So he's got a clue. All right, pass. And he actually gets a hand on the ball. So now this is uh, three comes vertical. This is why we want to drop. This is better, better. Still not perfect, but it's better. If our feet don't get crossed now. We're, we're dropping to that hook curl area. Number three stays vertical. I could go match it. and He knows what's going on because we're practicing. Here's Trent back when he was a player. Uh, does he pass interfere? I don't know. Maybe. Does he get his hands on number three? Absolutely. Is he? He's probably more of a hold than a, a, a interference. But that he never grabs the jersey, so he, he's relating to number three. He could, if he drops a little deeper, he maybe gets a hand on the ball. Our blitz block destruct ends up being the, the same for our inside linebackers as their base technique. They're just coming downhill and they're trying to get skinnier now. Uh, when we're on a blitz, we've got the complete mindset of I'm, I'm probably dipping and ripping in almost all situations. I'm trying to get into the backfield and make a play. Coach, coach, uh, me as the coach, I, I, I've got something tendency wise that, uh, hey, this is where they're going. I'm going to try and run the linebacker through the gap. Uh, before the, the offense can get on blocking him. Just for uh, uh, terminology reasons, A, bat, a gap, B gap, C gap, um, D gap, uh, ultimately our, our inside linebackers, they're working attacks through A gap or blazes through B gap. Here we got an attack on the backside of our, our will linebacker, Robbie. He got really good at this. 
guard away. He's working through the A gap. The center should be working back to block him. Our, our, our nose occupies both the guard and the center. He makes a tackle from behind, no gain. How is that not a tackle for loss? And, and I don't like him showing it as much as he is, but he got really good at this. Like how the center doesn't see him, I don't understand. And, and that's why we're calling a blitz. That's why we get those guys good at, at blitzing. A um, little better example, not showing it as much. Here's a blaze. And we tackle the mesh. End zone shot. Run through B gap. Tackle everything. This is an example. As, as much as... Uh, I think because we read guards like I've talked about previously, um, we end up picking things up. Like you'll see out of our Mac linebacker here, we end up picking things up that that guard does. So he is on a uh, blaze. He sees that guard go away. He scrapes flat. And we get a two-yard loss off of it. Like that's no different than what he'd do from depth. And I, I don't love how it shows it, but sometimes you, you want to play games with those inside linebackers. Sometimes they want to show so that way they can uh, fall out and, and play coverage. Sometimes you want to time it up and, and hit it at the snap. And because he's blitzing, we get a two-yard loss with his tackle as opposed to maybe a, a zero-yard gain. Uh, lots of blitzing in this game. It was a crazy game. I think the final score was like 42-38, a little bit of a shootout. Not a great defensive uh, showing, but we, we've got some things on highlight. And this this is an example of both guys working together. So as much as we're working a blaze on the play side here, and, and we take on the lead blocker right away. You know, the lead blocker's getting hit. That's one or two yards in the backfield. He could reach out and, like, slap the quarterback's butt, really. That's that's how far in the backfield we are. And, and that blows things up faster. The backside linebacker's scraping across. We get both guys on the tackle. You tackle better when you get more guys on the tackle. Blaze here. Much better job of, of not showing it. Timing up the cadence. He's ripping underneath the tackle. The, the five techniques outside in C gap. Because he rips underneath the tackle. Picks off the guard. And this is the case. So last time I said those linebackers still got to work together. If our will linebacker scrapes downhill, that will linebacker scrapes downhill, his shoulders turn. If he kept his shoulders square, scrapes downhill, he doesn't get cut back on, and, and instead we give up the touchdown. And, and that, that sucks because we put the Mac linebacker in a spot where the blocking scheme is completely disrupted. So we don't have that, that cutback out of the backside linebacker. Um, this is just unfair. <laughs> Boom, in the backfield, backside attack. And, and this is, as much as it's a fundamental by the linebacker, he does a great job of not showing it. It's starting to creep just a little bit. Times it up, ball's getting snapped. And because of that nose, that nose occupies the center. We get the run through. Later on in the game, he's overexcited. He's showing it a little bit more. Don't love it as much. More effective forces a fumble. And, and that's why you're calling that attack or that blaze. Play side blaze coming here. Good job timing it up. Ball snapped. I'm at full speed. Like the, the goal for us is we want to make sure the offensive line's up there, set, getting ready. And we want to time up. We want to hit the line of scrimmage on the snap. Tackle for loss, fumble, life's good. We got a blaze again. Into the backfield, disrupt the blocking scheme. And that, that's ultimately why you're calling. Uh, a blitz. You're trying to create that turnover. You're trying to help the linebacker be even more aggressive. Um, funny story with this. So uh, the team we're playing, they, they were in empty for about five or six plays before this. So uh, our, our 
we sub a DB in at outside linebacker and we're playing and I'm, I'm playing straight cover zero against their empty. So I, I called up our uh, blaze attack, I believe. They come out under center and they just don't pick up the backside uh, linebacker on the attack. Run through, tackle the mesh, turnover. And just nerdy DC coaching point. Uh, that's the DB playing outside linebacker. <laughs> he, he, he pays just enough attention that he understands, all right, my job is to get to the ball as outside linebacker. And if I get a kickoff block, that means I go inside it. Nice job by everybody on that. Uh, coverage sack really coming here, but our linebackers, we get to the end zone view. This is just beautiful stuff. Everybody's in a gap. And as much as it's outside linebacker who, who makes the tackle, our inside linebackers celebrating because they know we did the job as a unit. Number five flushes the quarterback from the wheel spot. 82's pursuing. Big, uh, big sack late in the game. Blaze coming here. Just good job. This is a good example of, of you got to have relentless pursuit especially in blitz situations. Keeps working the ball, working the ball. And, and really both inside linebackers in on the play at the end of this. Let's see the end zone shot fast. Keeps going, keeps going. Forces the ball up inside. And is excited about it. Here we are against Barron Springs a few years ago. We got a double blaze on. Could bring it harder and faster. They hadn't seen a blitz in a, uh, uh, yet in the game. We'll call it double blaze here. Get out to the perimeter. Ultimately, the, the center doesn't get there because the guard gets occupied by the two technique working inside. Just all of a sudden change, and, and ultimately the blitzing, that, that, as much as it's teaching the linebackers techniques, the linebackers over excited on this one, how, how they don't pick him up. They're occupied with our nose. That's a kind of a scheme type deal. As much as that's the linebacker getting skinny, working through a gap. It's changing up the look for that offensive line, make life hard. The guard went down and the center went back. They got shot here. We got a blaze on the backside. Good example of, of not being, other than taking that one step, good example of being a little bit patient with the blitz, of timing it up. That's violent how the quarterback just goes down. Because of that, he ends up completely on block because he doesn't show it. Real good job by Kevin here. At the high school level, I think inside linebackers are most effective when you are using them to provide pressure. We play a lot of cover zero, and, and we're going to have the linebackers get uh, to the quarterback, um, pressure the quarterback, and maybe match a uh, running back out of the backfield, depending on what we do with our outside linebackers. But there's times and places when you're playing your zone coverage. Um, ultimately, our, our matchup, cover four, cover two, two read type deal. Um, where those inside linebackers, their ability to pass, drop, and relate to receivers is what makes a coverage airtight. And it, it lets you give different looks by their ability to pass, drop, and, and play off of what the number three receiver does. So, again, their pass, drop, we talked a little bit about this when going over the fundamentals. Their pass, drop's approximately a 45, working to play inside and under the route of the final number three receiver. And, and, and Final number three receiver means if three goes out, I'm looking for something coming in replacing him. If three comes at me, that's what I'm hooking up on. That's what I'm playing inside and underneath. Uh, after taking that first step downhill, that's probably the biggest pain in the butt about seven on sevens is those inside linebackers get used to, all right, I can just drop, I just drop, I just drop. I still want that first step downhill, checking what my guard does if I'm reading guard, checking what the backfield does if I'm reading backfield. Um, and then that linebacker should immediately drop once he sees his pass from whatever his key is, once he reads past, 
he wants to drop his outside foot backwards at a 45, open up his hips, uh, and, and get dropping, snapping his eyes to that number three receiver wherever he is. If he's out of the backfield two by two, or if he's uh, either a tight end or a slot receiver in, in three by one stuff, and sprint for death. We're, we're aiming for 10 to 12 yards because in a game it turns into eight to 10 yards. We're keeping our head on a swivel. Uh, and again, relating to what that number three receiver does. You know, if, if that three receiver goes out, it might be a slant or dig um, coming from outside receivers. It might be a crossing route. Could be a QB scramble. Uh, if you got a scrambling QB, that, that's something inside linebackers have to be able to account for. So here is an example of, of being the help with the, the containing the quarterback. So the way we play it a lot of times, it's two by two. There's a number of three receiver. If we're run, rushing only five, and this is the last play of the half, uh, if we're rushing only three, excuse me, we're playing five zero five. That's why I said that. Uh, right now, end of the half, he's relating to number three, the linebacker on the bottom of the screen, our Will. Mac linebacker spying the quarterback because he's a scrambling quarterback. That, that, that's the deal we got going on. And this is a good example of spying. Something we don't coach up all that much, but his job, don't let that guy scramble. He forces him. We get, I think, our one and only sack of the game. Other linebackers working on the number three receiver. All right, what's the number three receiver do? It's the running back. Oh, he's helping block. So now I can help with crossers. And it'd be nice if he got a better reroute here on, on this uh, inside route. That route's so flat, I might as well stay on top of it. Plus, the, the play's taking longer. They got the check down here, and he, he knows it. He gets back up and scrambles. He lost his foot. And, but the quarterback didn't want to throw there. Uh, another Here's an example relating to number three receiver. Okay, guard releases that screen. Three receivers outside. I'm working it outside. Three receiver blocks. All right, find the thing coming in. Our five technique almost makes a sweet play in the backfield. And our inside linebacker comes and cleans it up. So he's looking for the first thing coming in because three's been out. Plus his guard let him, his guard leads him there just as much as anything else. Guard releases. That's something we actually implemented in the inside run that week for this team because they run a lot of jailbreak screen, tunnel screen stuff, and we get out to the perimeter. One of the drills we do to uh, try, try and rep that, I should say inside linebacker, but whatever, we'll keep rolling through it, is our, our inside 2-3-2. Two, two. Uh, inside linebackers are playing 3-2. to two. Uh, They're rerouting the seam by 3. And, and they're using their eyes as they reroute that number three to find the final number two. If that number three is coming out of the backfield here, um, if he works out, I'm working to number two. I'm playing inside, making sure there's some air under the ball. So here we are. Number three's in the backfield. Number three blocks. I can drop. It'd be nice if our, our linebacker on the bottom screen could drop better. Uh, linebacker top of the screen does a great job here. Unfortunately, he tips it and it gets completed to the seam route. But we, we had been beaten by the, the dig or the slant, whatever you want to call that, by number one. Uh, we'd been beaten by that a couple times earlier in this game. Right now, he, he understands, all right, I'm playing inside and underneath the two. Number three never came out in the route. I don't have to help with that. And, and, and he's going to be inside of that route unfortunately tips it up gets caught so now where's number three one two three there's the third receiver it also happens to be wearing number three he's in the seam i'm in the seam i'm underneath it i undercut it and, and i'm playing in underneath it and undercutting it because now if the quarterback wants to complete that he's got to put more air on the ball he puts more air on the ball that gives our safety time to come up and get it Good pass breakup. Other thing we work is uh, crossing routes there. So we, we, we got four cards when we do this drill. That's it. Working our 2-3-2 two, two matches um, out of 2-2. Out of two two. And this gets the linebackers really kind of good at everything they're doing. Again, inside linebackers play 3-2. to two. What's 3 do, do? 3 goes away. So I snap my eyes here to that number 2. Number 2 crosses. If I drop for enough depth, 
and understand what offenses are trying to do. Yeah, all right, hit that four yard route. He's going to pass by me. I'll leverage inside. Uh, other linebacker leverages outside. Talking about the Mac linebacker primarily here. And, and, and we'll get that thing tackled for a four, five, six yard gain. Until we get down around the goal line, that's fine. You know? um, but that guy goes across. Ultimately, I'd want the final number three ends up being that dig. Here's our JVs a few years ago. And they get some crossing route type deal here. Yep. Running backs out. Three's out. You see the eyes of the linebacker immediately goes outside. Where's Who's going to be the final number three? Uh, number seven coming across here. And this is a two-back set. So that running back blocking, he's number two. He barely matters. And then he blocks. So he really doesn't matter in the pass coverage. Eyes outside. And really, it's uh, our backside linebacker does a better job of it. I don't get it. I don't, but they're JV guys. All right, that's your guy. You want to be, all right, he crosses in front of you. Uh, that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Like, all right, crosses in front. We should have him keeping leverage to that, that side. 82, it'd be nice if he dropped off for a little more depth. And then we're going to drive on the route when it gets thrown. Because what are, what are teams trying to do when they got that crosser coming? They're trying to hit a dig. Here's the dig coming from the other side. Now, the, the one thing, as much as number 11 gets lost here a little bit, he keeps dropping, his head's on a swivel. He's able to break on the ball as he gets thrown in the area of the final number three. And it doesn't get thrown while he gets a hand on the ball. Real good out of these two linebackers. So where's the number three receiver? It's two by two. He's, he's the running back in the backfield. He fakes the ball and he releases to the flats. Okay. Uh, he's So that linebacker's relating there. Three goes away for the other inside linebacker. Who's the new final three? He's crossing right here. And because those linebackers take care of the underneath stuff, that lets our DBs sink and, and drive down on the routes. Almost come up with the pick. I mean, ultimately, we want to get these things bracketed by our safeties in our corners. And you, and you see a good job here. We're playing our, our, our matchup coverage. The corner forces the inside release. So the safety that you can't see on the screen, he plays the post. Corner's playing outside. He's able to fall in. We got the route that they're trying to get to, the dig, coming from the other side. We got to bracket it. Uh, other thing will work is, is some half field stuff. So again, what's that number three do? Does he block? Does he release? If he releases and you're playing split safety coverages, like that inside linebacker's got to be ready. That's the classic seven on seven route of, of send the running back up the seam. All right. Uh, other thing three can do, he works to the perimeter immediately. Uh, three works to the perimeter in the drill. I'm going to yell push. I'm, I'm matching the new number three here. That number two comes in. That's going to be my job. Unless he, I'll reroute it if he keeps on crossing. I'm yelling cross, cross, cross to my, my buddy at linebacker. If that number three fakes, that's that's my job. We still got uh, three guys out on the perimeter, outside linebacker, corner safety, to take care of the number one and number two receivers. Here's a good example of stacking the three receiver, three receiver fakes. So that fake led his eyes to the next receiver, number 17. And 17's covered. We're inside underneath with the linebacker. We're outside on top. Uh, really, we should be inside on top, but we're on top with the safety. Corner coverage is pretty good, so should have got an intentional down, uh, grounding, in my opinion. Playing high school rules here. So uh, here's an example. Number three goes vertical. Not number three, excuse me. It starts out three by one, goes to two by two. So where's number three? It's the running back. 
running back blocks, both guys can stack and sink. Ref gets in the way of, of the inside linebacker on the top of the screen. So his drop's not deep enough. Inside linebacker on the bottom of the screen does a great job dropping, really. Heads on a swivel. He'd be able to make the tackle if it was completed. So now it's two by two. Number three is the running back. Here's a good example of we're showing, we're walking up, we're showing like we're going to go. Both guys are showing like they're going to go. Only one does. Great job of, all right, there's no number three receiver. I'm, I'm helping with crossers. Here comes the slant. And he just barely misses the pick. This is a good example. If, if he sprinted his butt back to about 12 yards, he's driving down on it. Instead of, instead of fingertips on it, he gets all his hands on it. He's picking it. He's running for a while, having extra fun. End zone shot. Three's part of the protection. Stack and sink. Sink harder. And, and now that quarterback was going to run him down. But he, he's running for a while. He's having a lot of fun talking about how he touched the ball. Uh, number three receivers in here at fullback now. Fullback goes away. Number three receivers technically the running back. Okay. Number three receiver, running back, runs a fake, becomes part of the pass pro. The other back in the backfield, the, the, the fullback, sniffer, whatever you want to call him, he's part of the protection. I, I'm a stack and sink player. Great job sprinting to the ball, making a tackle for a four-yard gain. First and ten, we can live with that. Uh, three by one matches, half field. If everything's in the seam, we're, we're going to be in the seam. We're going to play inside and underneath. Inside underneath. Three goes out. I'm getting my eyes out, finding the final number three in, in the seam alert look here. Uh, that's was the original number one becomes the final number three. That's what I'm matching. I'm playing the underneath stuff so that way outside linebacker safeties can play uh, on top and, and and keep leverage and maybe double bracket something like a corner route by number two. The seam cross there. Three's in the seam. I'm starting to reroute that, but my eyes are to two. If two crosses the uh, original lineman or the number three, he's the new final number three, that's mine. So here we go. Number three, Mac linebacker drops off, plays underneath the seam, forces the ball to be thrown somewhere else. And here's a case of our outside linebacker. We drop off deeper. All right, three goes to the flats like that. That's not really my job when we're working our cloud coverage. If I keep sinking as well as the outside linebacker, that curl route that they run with the number one receiver, I, I play underneath it. They check it down. They get less of a gain. Real good on number threes in the seam. Inside linebacker actually plays it better than the outside linebacker, so they check it out to the outside linebacker. Unfortunately, they only need a one-yard gain. Really not bad pass coverage at all. It's just third and one. They need one. They get one. And now this, this ball is going to get completed. I, this is one of those things. Uh, alignment that we talked about. All right, it's empty here. I want to work to a 50 technique. He's still buried inside as probably a 20 technique. And I, I want to work outside a little bit more, especially this team was not like a quarterback run team when they got empty. But three's in the seam. He plays them. All right, eight-yard game. Early, early in the drive. No big deal. So now number three receiver, it uh, starts off, it's two by two. Now it becomes three by one. Number three receiver is the tight end. I drop. Now if he worked, instead of working, he's dropping on his 45, he should see the stem of that receiver and stop his drop, let the receiver come to him. And instead of working it in there and, and getting a tackle again not not a terrible play just that ball maybe doesn't get thrown if he works on stacking him inside and then on top of that he doesn't play 
the route's pretty flat, but if he's positioned inside and works to play underneath, he, he's got to understand his safety's got his back. And, I mean, that's who ultimately makes the play, is the safety. Watch the end zone clip real fast. He doesn't keep that inside leverage is probably the biggest problem here. Especially with what we got going on on the backside. He, he needs to understand what's what's his backside linebacker working. Um, oh, we're bringing the outside linebacker. So the backside linebacker needs to help on the, on the number two. As always, guys, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. Check me out and follow me on Twitter at Coach Klee. Um, don't forget to su subscribe to the channel if you like what you see. And if you have uh, anything that maybe requires a longer response, hit me up at CoachBrianKlee at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. See you again.